guys, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and Custom Finishes by Pam. Tonight, we are going to chat about glazing. Uh, I get lots of questions every week about glazing and what's the best way to glaze and how much glaze is enough glaze. So we are going to chat about glazing this piece of furniture right here. Um, this piece has great details. I don't know if you can see in these pictures. I kind of started part of it, but I am going to go over glazing with you guys tonight to make it easier for you, okay? Um, so, glazing, um, when it comes to glazing, one of the best things that you can do is after you paint your piece of furniture, put some type of clear coat on it, um, whether it is, um, a flat clear coat, a satin clear coat, a glossy clear coat, whatever works best for you, put whatever you want to on it. Um, the other thing I want you to do is be sure and let things dry before you start messing with it. But inevitably, there's always somebody has a question um, about what's the best way to glaze. So, we are going to go over that tonight. Um, this piece was a slick slick piece of furniture um i used it in a live video the other day talking about to slick stick or not to slick stick and i did slick stick this piece because it was about as slick as black lacquer um so if you look at it right now um you can see where i started glazing it but i wanted to show you how this piece was very slick so i base coated the whole piece with slick stick after i cleaned it well and then i have painted it in uh sandbar and I have also clear coated it with a satin clear coat. The reason you want to clear coat with a satin clear coat is because it just makes your glaze move around a lot easier, especially if you're a beginner. Um, it really helps. I mean, a lot of people don't do that, but it really, really helps if you'll just um, put some clear coat on there. It makes it go so much faster. A couple other things I always have when I am doing my uh, glazing. I always have my mister bottle in case I have a little problem area. I always keep my baby wipes in the case I need one of those for a little stubborn spot and I just get started glazing. So um, when you're doing a big piece like this, I don't know if you can tell how big this table is, but it is a fairly large table. Um, when I'm doing a table this large, I just take one of these little paper plates um, I go ahead and pour out my glaze. I am using Dixie Bell's Van Dyke Brown. Um, I go ahead and pour me some out, and I actually use my mister bottle, and I just miss the plate. Because the glaze that I'm using, I don't want it to be full strength. And this is the sponge that I usually use on a large piece. Just to kind of dirty up the piece, that's how I get my base coat of glaze. So, hey, Patricia! That way you can get your base coat on there, your base coat of glaze. So that's what I do. And I just kind of pat my sponge, get a little bit, hey Vicki, and then I just start glazing. I like to go from end to end because as you guys know, I used to be in computers, so my brain works that way. You may wanna do something different. You can do it any way you want to when it's your piece. But I like to kind of work it in a little bit, reload my sponge. If your sponge gets dry, make sure and wet it again because you want that glaze moving. You don't want it sitting. And you want to keep in mind when you're working a big piece like this, you got to keep moving because you don't want it to, to sit and then you've got uneven drying or something like that. If you feel it start getting to dry, Get your mister bottle out. Wet it down a little bit. Because that is the way you're gonna keep it moving. If you notice a spot that it's way too thick or something, grab your baby wipe. And I always wipe mine back with these towel rags. You see, mine's a little bit drier than I want it to be right there. So we're gonna wipe it a little bit with that baby wipe and keep it moving.
Like I say, now I use my baby wipe just to keep everything moving the way that I want it to so that we don't have an uneven dry. All right. All right, we've got one little spot right here in the middle that I don't like the way it looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mist it a little bit and we're gonna try that spot again. All right. Like I say, if you had that problem spot, just go back and do it over. Not a big deal. Sometimes you'll get that if it dries too quickly, and Lord knows it has been so hot here in Georgia today. I mean, really, really, really hot. And even though we're inside, it is still very warm. All right. Now, you need to decide how much or how little glaze you want. My customer wants a lot of glaze on her table, so I'm probably going to let this glaze dry and do another level of glaze because she really wants it heavy. All right. I'm going to put a little bit more in that center, and again, I told you guys we're going to just do this and I missed it so that it's nice and wet and I just pat it with my sponge. All right, we're gonna add that little bit back in there. We're gonna let it sit just a minute. Okay, so once we've gotten the top done, which of course is our big dog part that has to be done, then you've got to think about what you're going to do with all of these beautiful details that there are. Again, there's a lot of things that can make this easier for you. Um, if you want to uh, go back and, I can't think and talk. <laughs> if you wanna go back and make it layered, I've already started with some of the glazing. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna go down to here. I've already started a little bit of the glazing. I don't know if you can see from where you are, but some of the glazing, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna pull you off of there just a second. Sorry, don't wanna make anybody sick. All right, here is some of the detailing. When you are doing detailing like there is on these legs and stuff, the best thing to do in a lot of cases is to get you the right kind of brush, okay? Um, I love to use Paint Pixie brushes uh, the French rounds are fantastic for getting in all of these grooves and stuff. So, again, um, if you want to put your glaze on full strength, put it on. A lot of times when I'm doing my first layer, when I've got a heavy glazed piece, I don't necessarily use it full strength. I go in and I just put water it down a little bit and then I go up and down that leg and make sure I get it on there really well. And another thing is remember that some of the talent lies in how you take it off. A lot of times when you are glazing, if you'll rub against the grain, then that will leave your gla glaze in those crevices that you've so carefully rubbed it in there as I'm just slamming it on. Um, it's fun, it's easy, and it makes a huge difference in the way that your piece looks. So, now we've put that on there. This is the second layer on this side. Let me see, I don't know, let me put you down so you can see. It really makes this leg look old and kind of crusty. Now that being said, you can also add texture to your pieces if you want to. It's real easy with swamp mud, um, you can add some texture. You can also use sea spray, which is again by Dixie Bell. And when you start wiping, like I say, if you wipe against the grain, then you will leave it in those crevices. And see, I'm making sure that I only, I'm wiping away what I don't want. 
but I want to leave it up against these flowers and things. I don't know. Can you see that? I'm leaving it up against the flowers and stuff so that they stand out. When you look at my piece, they stand out. And if there's too much in the crevice for you, again, just take your little baby wipe and wipe right up in there. And you can wipe all of it out. You can wipe part of it out. You can make it do it however works best for you. And your taste may vary according to what piece you're working on. All right. So I'm going to pull you down again so maybe you can see a little better what I'm doing. Don't get sick on me, anybody. Well, I just dropped you. Okay, so can you see how those pieces look? That way you kind of get an idea. This table has incredible detail for the type table that it is. So we are just trying to enhance that detail because it is a very sturdy table and she is wanting to save it rather than go away. This is the slick stick. This is what I used first. And here is my paint. I used sandbar. It didn't even take eight ounces of paint to do two coats on this table. And like I say, we're going to heavily glaze the entire piece. Hey, guys. Um... So, if you're doing this and you want a lighter glaze, like I say, water your glaze down a little bit and it won't go on so heavy. But, I know that this customer likes a heavy glaze. She's already come in and chatted with me and made her wishes known and I like to do whatever my customers want. So, um, if you guys are painting and glazing, kind of make sure that you know what you want because it's a lot easier to put more on than it is to take this off. So when you're glazing, just, you know, be sure. And again, like I say, if you use the paint pixie brush, the French round, it's great for that. A lot of people use chip brushes. You can use a chip brush to glaze it. It works great. Big surfaces, I use my sponges. I also have these if I want to use a smaller sponge. Um, but when you're doing a big surface, water it down a little bit and use this, and it just makes a huge difference. Um, it speeds up your time, and then you're into drive time dry time before you know it okay um so the other thing you got to remember is you can sand if you want to take some of the glaze off but in the case of this piece this piece has a red undertone um so if i decide to sand this piece i might break through its original finish and i might have a bleeder we don't want a bleeder so you definitely want to think about that before you start sanding or anything you can wet distress but I wouldn't sand on a piece like this that has a red undertone. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. If you guys have any more questions about glazing, though, please let me know. I will post a picture of my finished piece. And several of you have asked about painting a piece of furniture with me. I do have a paint your own piece class coming up in um, July. July the 21st, I think. I only have four spots left in the class. It's $85 a person. It's probably going to take us about three or three and a half hours. But you will get an eight ounce paint in your choice of color. And we, I'm going to have everything else you need to finish it. So if you guys want to sign up, please sign up today. And um, you can sign up on my website or on Facebook. And if you have more questions, hit me up. Thanks for watching, guys. Do I sell those? Yes, Laura, I do sell those. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions. Oh, I do sell the paint pixie brushes, Gina. I sell them online and I sell them here in my store. Okay, no questions, then I will um, get off of here. But the other thing is, um, I have started doing one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching via Skype or FaceTime or whatever works for you guys. So, if you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one instruction with me, please let me know, and we will schedule a time pretty much any day of the week. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great evening.